Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at three-dimensional coordinate geometry and three-dimensional vectors. So what we'll do first is we'll start off with all the basic concepts that we want to be able to calculate and also understand. And also take a look at the two-dimensional representations because I think we're all very familiar with those. And we'll go ahead and see how we can transfer that information to the three-dimensional case, which is not much of a conceptual jump. So we'll go ahead and see what we have here. Let's start off again with all the concepts that we need to look at. We have coordinates. How do you represent coordinates? How do you find a midpoint of a line segment? How do you find a distance of that segment or the length of that segment? Uh, what are the basis vectors that you have for two, dimensional, two dimensions? Uh, what is OP if O is going to be the origin and P is the terminal point? So in other words, this is a vector in standard position. What if you have a vector that is not in standard position? How do you find a representation of that vector? And then how do you go about finding the actual magnitude of that vector? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the two-dimensional case. And of course, when we go ahead and take a look at the two-dimensional case, we're looking at the Cartesian coordinate plane. So we basically have two axes. One's going to be the x-axis and the other one's going to be the y-axis. So we can go ahead and talk about two coordinates. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these two coordinates and just be very particular in the way that we note these two coordinates. Coordinate A is going to be x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and B is going to be x sub 2 comma y sub 2. Now if you have those two coordinates, how do you find the midpoint? Well you just have to find the average of both the x values and the y values and then you find the midpoint of that segment. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and find the distance, then of course we found the difference between the x coordinates and took that quantity and squared it, added the same thing to the y, uh, same thing went down to the y values, take the square of that, add those two and you take the square root of it, you found out the distance because again that's basically using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, those are basically the three dimensional coordinate parts uh, that we're going to take a look at. And after that is what we want to do is we want to see how these two relate to each other uh, in terms of vectors and three-dimensional coordinate or coordinate geometry. So with the basis vectors, what we have for two-dimensional space are your i and j vectors. And then say for example, if we have p being p sub 1 and p sub 2, then we can always go ahead and talk about this op, which is a vector in standard position as p sub 1 i plus p sub 2 j, and that's just going to be the same thing as p sub 1 comma p sub 2. Now if we wanted to go ahead and find out what the vector a, b is, now assuming that of course this is not in standard position, so we need to use these coordinates here, then that's just going to be x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And notice that what we do is if we take that uh, the magnitude of the vector a, b, then we just take these component parts and square it, and then take the square root of it, and you find the magnitude. So notice that these two right over here are exactly the same, except for one you're using a vector method to come up with the magnitude, and this one over here is just what is the distance uh, of that particular line segment. Now, if you go ahead and you take a look at the three-dimensional case, oftentimes what we're, we're not going to be able to draw the three-dimensional case too, too, too precisely because it's very difficult to do so. But uh, if we go ahead and take a look at what the coordinate plane looks like, we have the x, we have the y, and notice that the y-axis is at a 45 degree angle to the x. And then what we have is we have the z that is going to be going straight up and down. And notice that the bottom part portion over here is dotted because that's the part that you actually cannot see. So if we go ahead and take a look at how vector, uh, sorry, how coordinates are written in the three-dimensional case, notice that the only thing that is missing from the two-dimensional case is just that extra dimension, which is going to be your z values. So notice that a is going to be exactly the same thing here, except for we're also going to need to include z sub 1. b is going to be exactly the same here, except for we need to also go ahead and have z sub 2. So if we want to go ahead and take a look at the midpoint, notice that it's exactly the same, except for you just have to add one more part to it, because you need to go ahead and take the average of the z coordinate values. And then notice that even when it comes to the distance, it's the same thing. We just need to go ahead and add that part where you're taking the difference between the z values, squaring it, and then adding it to what we had before. 
Now, with the basis vectors, there is really, again, just one difference, and this is the fact that we have what is going to be called your k basis vector. Now, like the i and the j, all of them are going to have a magnitude of 1, and k, like i and j, are, is going to be in the positive direction of the axis which it is associated with, and in this case, it's the z-axis. So, if we go ahead and take a look at a point, which is p sub p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3, and we want to go ahead and find the vector form of that, if the vector is in standard position, then it's just going to be p sub 1 i plus p sub 2 j plus p sub 3 k, and that can be very easily written as p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3. Now, say for example again, if we don't have uh, the, uh, a vector in standard position, but we have the endpoints here and here, then notice that it is exactly the same thing except for just the z component is missing in the two-dimensional case, and we need to just add that for the three-dimensional case. And then notice the exact same thing happens when we talk about the magnitude. And notice again that, as with the two-dimensional case, these two are the same. And so there's consistency there as well. Okay, so we just need to make sure that we're very familiar with how to work with three-dimensional vectors based upon what we already know on two-dimensional vectors as well as two-dimensional coordinate geometry. And we just need to extend that to the three-dimensional case. So that's basically all we have to do for this one is we just need to make sure that we can transfer all the information from the two-dimensional case to the three-dimensional case. And the consistency is there, so it should be pretty straightforward, I think, for most of us to be able to make that conceptual jump. Okay, so we'll take a look and see if anybody has any questions with regards to three-dimensional vectors as well as three-dimensional coordinate geometry, and we'll see what you, how you do uh, in class the next time that we meet. Okay, so give it your best shot. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.